Well, everyone, if you weren't excited about what's happening in the laptop market, you should be right now because it's finally time for AMD to really hit back with the one two punch that we've all been waiting for. So that means the amazing Ryzen 5000 series processors that they're, you know, that we're already aware that's just dominating the market right now, along with the RDNA 2 GPU architecture. That's right. AMD is finally getting their latest and greatest RX 6000 series GPUs into laptops uh, with a bunch of features that are being supercharged by the Ryzen CPUs. Uh, this is sort of a big deal, actually, for anyone searching for a gaming notebook, since a lot of AMD's shared technologies are perfectly designed uh, for this space. So right now, there are three different GPUs launching. The RX 6800M, the 6700M, and the 6600M that are supposed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the RTX 3080, the 3070, and the 3060. But as usual, the marketing teams at AMD are making three big claims. The first one is that the RX 6000M is able to hang in with some of the best RTX 3000 laptop GPUs around. Um, secondly, uh, it delivers a lot better performance than anything else when unplugged and running on just battery power, which is Kind of a big claim, actually. And finally, laptops rocking this GPU will get some pretty insane overall battery life. So I'm going to use this video to give you an introduction to these new GPUs and also put each one of those claims to the test by using this. This, my friends, is the new Asus Strix G15. And it's going to be an interesting one, so let's just get right into it after a quick message from our sponsor. The new N7 B550 gaming motherboard from NZXT is something out of the ordinary. The clean aesthetics with the metal cover is a minimalist dream come true. You get built-in I.O. shield and headers that are laid out optimally for a simple plug-and-play setup. The N7 also supports third-party RGB accessories through CAM software, available in both black and white models, as well as Intel and AMD. Learn more down below. All right, so let's get right into what these new graphics cards are all about and why they're such a big deal in the laptop market. So at the very top of the lineup is the RX 6800M, which has 40 compute units, 2560 stream processors, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, 96 megabytes of infinity cache, and an average game clock of 2300 megahertz. Now you might notice that the RX 6800M has some pretty familiar specs, and that's because it's using the same exact Navi 22 core layout as the RX 6700 XT desktop part. Now, I know what some of you guys might be thinking. Will this cut into the super limited stock of that GPU? Supposedly, AMD is actually using rejected cores that couldn't actually consistently hit the 6700 XT's higher average clocks, so there's nothing to worry about. Anyways, the RX 6700M also uses the Navi 22 core, but in a more cut down form with 36 compute units, 10 gigabytes of memory, and less infinity cache as well. Then there's finally the RX 6600M, which actually features a new Navi 23 core, and that really cuts things down, but that's understandable since it's supposed to be added to uh, much more affordable gaming laptops. The total graphics power of these chips resembles NVIDIA's, but as usual, this is a super important thing to take into account when looking into laptop performance numbers. Just don't automatically assume a GPU will be able to deliver certain frame rates. I mentioned this in relation to the RTX 3000 series in our Tough Dash F15 review, um, but it's the same thing with Radeon GPUs as well. Frame rates have more to do with the amount of power uh, the cards being able to pull down um, than the name. So. In this case, an RX 6600M running at 100 watts could technically match a 6700M operating at 80 watts. Remember, those power targets are completely based on best case scenarios as well, and manufacturers can modify them further based on their own power plants uh, and cooling needs. A good example of this is the Legion 5 Pro, which has an amazing cooling system, so Lenovo was able to crank the RTX 3070 all the way up to 140 watts without any issues. And in gaming, it smoked almost every RTX 3080 laptop we've seen so far, since those operated in the 90 to 120 watt range. But anyways, one of the cornerstones of AMD's gaming laptop push is their Smart Shift technology, which we first saw uh, in last year's G515 SE from Dell, and it's been refined quite a bit. Now, I won't go into too much detail, but basically it allows the system power to be dynamically balanced between the CPU and the GPU. So when uh, there is a situation where one needs more juice, Smart Shift can actually allocate more power towards it, and that can actually you know, tend to help a lot, uh, uh, especially in gaming uh, 
aspects. So that's kind of cool. Think of it like NVIDIA's dynamic boost algorithm, but used exclusively on AMD laptops uh, that have a Ryzen CPU and a Radeon discrete graphics card. And also, if you're wondering, um, you can't actually turn off this feature because it's built directly into the laptop's firmware. So I guess this brings me to AMD's claims and how we're going to test them. Because like I've said a million times before, comparing apples to apples uh, on laptop testing is just it's almost impossible. That's because unlike on a desktop, there's countless variables preventing true performance comparisons. Most of them have to do with uh, power and how it's allocated from one laptop design to another, even if they're using you know, identical designs and, of course, components as well. So it's just all different. So as we go through this, I do want to be straightforward with you guys as to what's being tested and the average input power we saw from each of the laptop GPUs. Um, you'll, of course, see in the charts. I also want to mention that uh, all these tests were done in the high performance mode and not the turbo or 100% fan speed modes. So in some cases, uh, the GPU wattage may be less than the absolute maximum uh, of that particular design. I just hope that all makes sense. First up, there is the SCAR 15 AMD set for this video, which is fully kitted out with a Ryzen 9 5900HX. And on average, the RX 6800M hits about 140 watts in games. Then there's an additional 15% available with Smart Shift, but we never saw it peak over 150 watts. Then there's the Razer Blade 15 Advanced from 2021, uh, which has an Intel i7-10875H and an RTX 3070 running at 95 watts. We also have the amazing Zephyrus G15 with AMD's Ryzen 9 5900HS and an 80 watt RTX 3080, which is the lower end of that GPU's limits. Of course, there's also the Legion 5 Pro with its 140 watt RTX 3070 and probably the most similar RTX 3080-based laptop here, the Zephyrus Duo. Um, that's because of its processor and the fact that its GPU hits 120 watts in our testing, but that's still a good 20 watts lower than the RX 6800M. The only other Intel laptop in this whole thing is the Aorus 15G with a 3080 operating at around 95 watts. This leads me to AMD's first claim of the 6800Ms being just as fast as an RTX 3080 in gaming. But which 3080? Well, according to some notes buried in their presentation, they used a Strix SCAR 15 with a 5900HX, so on the surface of things, it looks pretty even. But they say the devil's in the details, and while I haven't reviewed it yet, according to a few colleagues that we've reached out to, that laptop's RTX 3080 hits around 115 watts on average. So yeah, we're looking at a pretty big 35 watt difference in GPUs right off the bat. So let's see how that translates to our own results. And right away, the 6800M proves something we've seen on the desktop side, which is that RDNA 2's GPUs absolutely love modern warfare. But then again, what's also pretty impressive is the RTX 3080's running at just 95 watts in the Intel system, and the Duo's 120 watts are hanging right in there, even though it consumes a lot less power. Meanwhile, the 5 Pro shows that throwing gobs of power at a lower-end GPU gives a pretty low rate of FPS returns. So first of all, in CSGO, it's pretty obvious. Intel has this game pretty well figured out since the two systems with an i7 CPU perform really, really well, even though they have lower wattage GPUs. But here, the 6800M is a middle-of-the-pack performer, even though it's sucking back a lot more power than almost everything else other than the 5 Pro. I mean, the 1% lows are impressive, but overall, this isn't a great showing relative to power. In Doom, the order changes again with the higher clock speeds from the Legion 5 Pro leading, and the two Intel systems putting in great showings as well. The RX 6800M pops in with some good numbers as well, so I can't be too critical since it's starting to look like AMD's built a competitive solution at least. But in some situations, it doesn't really matter how much power you throw at a problem. And here, the RX 6800M just sinks to the bottom of the charts. This is something that we've come to expect with RDNA 2 and games based off the Unreal Engine, so it doesn't come as a surprise, guys. Now, there's some pretty good results in Rainbow Six, but I've got to say, even though they're using older Intel 10 Gen chips, the Blade 15 and the Aorus 15G show why CP performance is so important in 1080p gaming. But in comparison to other Ryzen-based laptops like the Zephyrus Duo, the new Radeon GPU wins by a narrow margin, so that's good news. In a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, I really have to be impressed with what AMD is bringing to the table here. But like on the desktop, Nvidia's GPUs are a lot better optimized for this game. That means the lower wattage RTX 3080s can normally keep up pretty well, even at 1080p. 
So, can the RX 6800M consistently beat the RTX 3080 like AMD claimed? Well, technically, yes, but it sucks a lot more power to get into its position. You see, on the desktop side, that might not be a big deal, even though the RX 6000 series, you know, there has been really good efficiency. But when it comes to laptop designs, there's a lot more strict thermal and power needs, and that poses a bit of a challenge for laptop manufacturers. But when plugged in, at least, it looks like the RX 6800M is exactly what's needed a true competitor to the best that NVIDIA has to offer right now. And after years of struggling in the gaming laptop GP market, this is actually pretty amazing to see. But what about AMD's battery claims that all revolve around ultra low idle GP power and could result in some of the longest lasting gaming laptops around? Well, there might be something to that since the Strix G15 is the first gaming laptop we've seen that can hit more than 13 hours without a lower voltage CPU. For example, the Zephyrus G15 uses the 5900HS, which is a more efficient version of the 5900HX. But we'll have to see how this holds up since these ASUS laptops also have some of the biggest batteries around. A heavier load actually shows how important that more efficient HS class CPU is, since the Strix G15 only gets a bit better battery life than other laptops here. But long battery life is one small part of the equation, since another thing that AMD said that jumped out to pretty much all of us was how well their GPUs will perform while being unplugged, which means while being on battery. Supposedly, we should expect a lot better results on these new Radeon GPUs than on anything from Team Green. This actually really hit home because I just finished an in-depth video about gaming on battery power, which you can check it out right over here. The main issue with this claim is, like we've seen before, the amount of power being pushed to components is highly dependent on how the manufacturer handles their own power plants. And that's especially true when it comes to performance uh, while being on battery. Some don't want premature wear on their cells, so output is being capped, and others just go balls to the walls. So claims like this is putting AMD in a very shaky position, if that makes sense. But anyways, let's see how the G15 actually handles things. Overall, the ARC 6800M's frequencies are a lot lower than when it's plugged in, but its performance isn't completely kneecapped either, since it stays above 1300 megahertz. So you should still be able to get okay frame rates, or at least until the battery hits about 40% capacity. Then there's a step down to lower speeds and another cut to 675 megahertz with 20% remaining. That's nothing like some other laptops, but let's compare it to the Aorus 15G I just mentioned when both laptops have 50% remaining. And well, the results are really all over the place for both laptops with pretty significant cuts to their overall frame rates. Sometimes AMD wins and sometimes the RTX 3080 is ahead. It's really dependent on what game you play. So I guess this really isn't a conclusive result either way, since both laptops would allow you to game on battery if you're really that desperate. But I'd recommend taking my advice from that video and just try to avoid gaming on battery while being unplugged because it's a pretty painful experience. So I guess that wraps things up for now. And I've got to say, even though the ARX 6800M's real world performance didn't quite live up to AMD's claims, it's just really great to see competition or more competition. But I think the most important thing about this launch is something I haven't mentioned yet, and that's pricing. Yes, I know gaming laptop prices varies massively from one manufacturer to another one. Uh, and according to ASUS, the Strix G15 I looked at today uh, should hit store shelves and it should cost a little shy of $1,700. While a full review is coming very soon, that price is actually a lot more affordable than NVIDIA's RTX 3070 and RTX 3080 based Ryzen laptops out there. And compare that to Intel's 11th gen, well, uh, let's, just, let's just not get into that pricing mess. It also used to be that gamers roll their eyes at these gaming laptops, but the fact of the matter is they're getting better and better. Not only that, what's really crazy is a lot of these 6700 XTs by themselves cost almost as much as this laptop right now. So, that's something to chew on to, isn't it? On that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about AMD's new RX 6000 series announcements. Let us know what you guys think about its performance and uh, you know if you're impressed by what AMD was able to bring to the table. Um, yeah, it's great to see competition. That's all I gotta say. I'm Ebro with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, spend responsibly, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.